No, it's, so it's supposed to blink that slowly. That's uh, so. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. So of course, as all the programs, uh, SPSS also has its uh, help menus. Um, and it has tutorials. That's a good starting point for us. So most of what you will do this first week is, is actually to, to work on some tutorials uh, on Thursday. Or actually, you should try, if you have time, to do it before Thursday. And it's a good chance that you will uh, figure out this very nicely for yourself. And then you might not even need this lab exercise. And or there can be just a few things that you need to work more on on, on this exercise. So let me just show you what our tutorials. Here is the help menu. Um, uh, this is one thing that has changed a little bit from the version 8 to the 22 because it's now it used to be on the computer, but now it's on the web, I think. So let's see what happens. So here you come to the whole sort of help system, which is now web-based. And that's, of course, in line with the modern, the modern world, rather than having uh, HTML files stored on your computer. It's somewhere on the web. And the problem with this is you have to be on the web connection, I guess, to, to use this. <coughs> but people more or less always are nowadays. So tutorials are here. And It goes, I mean, uh, the, the first few exercises are just some sort of guided steps through some of these tutorials. And it's just to get used to SPSs. Um, it's not going to be the most exciting thing you have done in your life, I hope. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's probably necessary or at least quite useful. So we'll do it. Um, about sample files, if you go into this uh, uh, tutorial here, you can click on sample files. Um, let's click here somewhere. Then there is actually a slight description of all of these sample files that I showed you that are on the C drive there. So Sometime, if you want to play with some sample files, you can go in here and check what it's more or less about. Yeah. So we will see a lot of that this week. Um, this is just a sort of suggestion. Um, in this course, and probably many other courses, you will use computers and you will make, at least in this course, many different files. You will save output, you will save data that you have worked on, and so on. So I'm just suggesting that you get some structure on your file system for having a log 708 folder, for instance, and then I don't know, you, you have to figure out how to structure this, but uh, what is this? Um, yeah. Maybe you will have subfolders for what is mandatory. What is ordinary? So you will see in a couple of weeks that if you don't have a structure, you will want one because it's going to be a little bit messy to have all the files on the same level uh, like this. Yeah. 
you'll, you'll figure out this. Um, OK. Um, probably most of you or all of you have been working a little bit with Excel. Um, what's the difference, main differences between SPSS and Excel? Uh, well, mainly SPSS is not a spreadsheet application. So while in, S in Excel, Excel operates mainly on cells. So the sort of computing unit is often a cell. And then you can have a formula down here that involves this cell and those cells. And then also this one, for instance, if you're. So you have these complicated formulas connecting cells and stuff. There's nothing like that in SPSS. SPSS will always just have a variable name here. So a column is a variable called x. And here's another called y. And you can compute, for instance, a new one called x plus y, which will take all of these numbers and add and place the result here. But there's nowhere you're going to make uh, this one. You can fix this cell and make a formula involving different uh, selections of cells like you do in Excel. So everything in SPSS goes on whole columns. Right. Um, hmm, difference Excel is not a statistics tool. There are some options for doing some simple things there, but it's really not a statistics tool. It has too many limitations for doing proper statistics, I would say. Um, yeah, so Excel has sort of all these these features that you find in Microsoft products, they are very easy to get started with, and you can do fancy things right on the fly. But then you sort of, later on, you face the threshold when you want to do a more advanced things. So SPSS is, is <coughs> maybe more difficult to get started with, but then things will, you can do more complicated things with greater ease later on. For instance, Excel, the data, if you work on data, you will have it in some spreadsheet like this. And if you insert some graphics, it will typically just pop up. If you don't do anything particularly, it will just pop up somewhere just over your data like this. And then you can move it and stuff. But in SPSS, this is split totally in two different files. And it also forces a chronological structure on the output. Uh, certainly, some things could be more easily done in Excel, and if you like Excel, if you're if you're a bit trained on that, it's a very easy play to go back and forth with Excel and SPSS files, and you can save a SPSS file as an Excel file, open it in Excel, and do your magic, and go back to SPSS. For So you will figure out about that, I guess. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. So we we are not far from the end here now. I think we can do. We we are going to talk a little bit about data management. Um, So here is also one thing that is quite different between uh, SPSS and Excel because a data file in in SPSS you have variables they have a name but there is also a lot of other information that you can store about the variable and this is very handy actually um, So this is what we are going to talk about for the rest of this lecture, is just 
what I call defined variable information. How do we store information telling me that this is uh, this is a categorical variable? Uh, we can store encoding for values and so on. This is what we call variable information. So these other topics here is something that will come up next week, I guess, or even later. But they also belong to what is called uh, data management. So data management means working on the data <coughs> in different ways. And one way of operating on data is, of course, something we very often want to do is to compute new variables from old ones. So we have some data here, but we want to look at the ratio of that to this one, and how can we compute that, and so on. So this is what I, what I call calculations <coughs> of new variables. And we're going to learn later on how to work on different subsets of a data material. This is also quite common. Um, you have this data, but I will uh, only look at those with income above $25,000. So I select a subset of the sample and work on that. So this comes in the future, but today we are going to talk about variable information, variable properties. So now you will notice that the SPSS data window it has a secret. There are two little buttons down here. One is called data view, and the other is called variable view. So when we're in the data view, it's what we have seen so far. We see the numbers, and we see the name of a variable, but we don't see much else. Um, when we go to the variable view, we see what uh, we see information about the variables. So I'm going to show you that. I guess yeah. So we see what I call properties. Of variables. Um, and for one thing, SPSS sometimes, if you run some graphics, for instance, it will change the output depending on what properties you define for this variable whether it's a categorical or a scale uh, or a continuous variable and so on. So working seriously, we want to take care to define these properties uh, correctly. So we should try to just make it a little bit easier to see at least. Um, so this is the data view. You see down here. And the other is variable view. So there are just those, those two options. And you see you have many variables over here. And if you go to the variable view, you suddenly get a very different picture. You now get a list of all the variables in the data set and their properties along this, this way here. So 
you see different uh, <laughs> characteristics of the variables here. And maybe we want to go to, we could just go through them. So if you click there, you see the, the vari variable types that you can choose. Um, well, there's, there isn't so much we, we are going to do here, but you know, string, this is when you have just something that is a text. So the variable that is called country, this is just the name of the country, so it's a text string. Um, and otherwise, we will almost always use numeric. Um, if it's not a string, but certainly it could be dates, it could be numeric and scientific notation, and so on. But these are the most common. So most of these are numeric variables, but religion is a string. Um, yeah, the width is just um, the number of characters, I think. Yeah, you can check that out. I think it's just a maximum number of characters that you can use to define this value. So for a text with 36 should cover all countries in the world. Um, decimal places is obvious. For a numerical variable, it's just how many digits do you have after the, after the comma. Um, so let's No hocus pocus. Now the label is something that we might want to use. Um, what is the label? Well, if you look at the data file, you typically see some short, short variable name. So here it says urban, and it's not obvious what urban means for anyone looking just at this data. So if you go to the variable view and look at urban, it has a label which is a slightly more thorough description. So it now says that this variable is actually me measuring the percentage of people in the country living in cities. And that is the label. And what it, it's used for, it's... Um, Used like this. Go to data view, and if you rest the, the cursor over the variable name for 10 seconds or so, this label will show here. So you have the time to consider density. Ah, oh yeah, it's the number of people per square kilometer, and religion. It's the predominant religion of this country. Life exp is the average female life expectancy in the country, and so on. Right. And these labels, you define them here. If you want to change it, you just go in here and you, you add it like any, anything. Sometimes we call this a variable, variable label. That's just a slightly more detailed description of the variable, what it's measuring. And then there is something here called values. Uh, I call them, I think it's common to call them value labels.
these are explaining encodings. So quite frequently we want to have something that is maybe a categorical variable of some sort, either ordinal or nominal, <coughs> but we might want to do some sort of numeric operation on them. So we might encode, for instance, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, for instance, for this region is encoded by one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. And if you look at the data, region here now is 1 and if you go down a bit it's 2 and it's 3 but you don't know what that is actually so this uh, these value labels that we have here they allow us to to define this encoding here so here we we define that or we inform the user that 1 means OECD, 2 means <coughs> Eastern Europe, 3 means Pacific in Asia, and so on. And this just sits in here as a particular list of connections between the numbers and the labels. But if you go to the data view, you can choose to view either the data as they are defined in the data file or, or you can view the value labels so then you get to see in this this way so for some reason I don't know why this happens but uh, in this data file this this variable which is the predominant religion is not encoded by numbers it's just by string so whether I view value labels or not, this doesn't change, but uh, this region variable does. Okay. Now there's a quick switch between viewing uh, values and value labels, and this is this button up here. <coughs> just click this repeatedly it changes back and forth between showing uh, encoding and, and uh, or the numerical value and the uh, encoding like this okay yeah um. missing column I think it's just uh, it's not done in a proper way here I think but sometimes you want to have a special symbol for indicating a missing observation and this is quite common in data that you there is a hole in the data set where you don't have the population of some country and then uh, <coughs> maybe a period or dollar sign or something special character means that this observation was never recorded so and then when SPSS runs an analysis it will know that okay here here there there isn't any value in Excel for instance you can very often experience that if there is nothing there it's going to be interpreted as a zero for instance so if you sum a set of numbers and there's a zero here well it's not going to be in there um yeah columns is very simply the cell width that is used to show the data in the in the file that's not very exciting this alignment is obviously whether you want to see the number to the right or the left of the cell but this one is 
is something we will pay a little bit of attention to. It's called measure. Um, this is um, well, this classification of the of the variable as. It's, it's very similar to what we did in sort of theoretical uh, uh, way. We have numerical and then continuous and discrete. Then we had uh, categorical and Ordinal and nominal, yeah. And SPSS doesn't follow exactly that scheme, but it has something that is called a scale variable, which mainly co corresponds to to this one, numerical continuous. And then it has something called nominal and ordinal. I don't know if, yeah, there is one ordinal down there. And some nominal variables. So for instance, the predominant religion is a nominal categorical variable. So these are SPSS labels, scale, nominal, and um, yeah, so it kind of m merges these two in a way as being ordinal. So there are these three SPSS terminologies, it's scale, ordinal, or nominal. It's a little bit confusing to keep this, but it's not that important. So a scale is just something Measuring. <laughs> Just let it uh, stop. So, um, yeah, right. So, what you see here is that uh, there are different symbols for this. Uh, this is a nominal symbol. The ordinal is some sort of thing like this. So it shows that you have categories, but they are kind of ordered. And the scale is kind of a ruler. So it tells you that, OK, here we are measuring something on a, on a continuous scale. So yeah, and of course, we have the same sort of gray zones between where you go from being continuous to discrete and vice versa and so on. This is also a discussion you, that you might run into when you define this property for SPSS variables. Um, so there seems to be only one ordinal variable here, and this is a categorical ordinal variable, which is the predominant climate. So it's somehow arranged from the hottest to the coldest, I guess. And that makes it somehow ordinal. So probably this is, uh, it's possible to consider this range here as going from the hottest desert to arid desert and then arid tropical and blah, 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 and to Arctic, which is uh, close to here north. Um, our climate here will be probably somewhere between eight and nine, I guess and with a little bit of seven sometimes. What's going to happen in the winter here, it's going to be not as cold as you think. 
because we're close to the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf Stream make it uh, most often above zero, actually, which is surprising if you look at the map because there are almost no people on the planet living north of Molde. If you look at the map and try to figure out how many Globally. Anyone want to try a guess? I don't know the exact number, but I am pretty sure it's uh, I'm quite sure it's less than two million. And maybe it's closer to one million, I guess. And the main bulk of them are either in Norway or in the sort of ice-free part of Russia, with Murmansk being a 400,000 people town. But other than that, most of the planet on this latitude is just freezing cold, except the west coast of Norway. And that's an aside that has nothing to do with SPSs to do, but it was this climate thing that put me on the <coughs> so, okay. Yeah. So if you know, do something like uh, descriptive um, frequencies. You see, you get a list of variables here, and then you see that these symbols telling that this is a scale, so it's probably not going to make sense to look at the frequencies. It's probably going to be a decimal number of some sort. Whereas this is, a, this is a categorical thing. So here it would make sense to count frequencies. So this is quite helpful when you have a lot of variables and you don't really remember what was which, and so on. So you would do like this, uh, and count something, and then you get this output here telling you, well, we saw this in the, the other lecture. So this makes perfectly well sense to display this thing here, whereas if I do frequency on the population variable it doesn't make any sense at all because it just counts how many countries have exactly population 1600 1800 well there's one it's more or less one for each possible value and then this graphic looks completely useless yep. and I would know that already because I saw it was a scale variable so I wouldn't have to do this stupid exercise to come to this result. Okay. So we went through the variable types, this information that lies behind the data set. It's quite nice to have it there. And this is something I don't think you have in Excel. Uh, you can of course store a separate file explaining the codes and so on, but you don't have this integrated way of displaying stuff. Yeah. There is one uh, property which is called role, which you can safely ignore. And then we are at the final slides and what we're going to do on, well, this week more or less, is you want to try the first four exercises in, in chapter four, two. And you might note minor From version 18 to 22, there are some ma minor changes in some of these tutorials. And 
if there is something that appears completely uh, crazy, it might be because they have changed or removed some things in the tutorial. I saw one place I referred to, I think it was in exercise 2.4, I refer to something that is not just not there in the new version. So, but most of it should be doable. And if you can do these four exercises, then you see that the next step uh, doing some uh, uh, descriptive statistics is just right at your fingertips. So you can just, if you like, go on and play. And you can look at the further exercises in, in chapter two. But work on this first to be, sh be clear that you understand the topics there. And then you are welcome on Thursday in your respective groups um, to uh, work with uh, Vladimir. Okay, so we'll take the evening.